Brother Teresa once said, reach high for stars lie hidden in your soul. Dream deep, dream deep for every dream proceeds to go. At the age of 14, I first got involved through gangs through childhood friends. I was also introduced to drugs and alcohol at the age. Between drugs and alcohol, the only thing I wanted to do for the rest of my life was to live the gangbang life. I didn't care if I died, as long as I died for my gang. At the time I was enrolled in a alternative school, a school designated to deal with students who were having trouble in a high school. In a traditional high school, I simply got kicked out of their home school. When I first set steps in the school, I figured it'd be like the other high schools I attended. I figured the minute I messed up, they would toss me out like the other high schools did. But I was wrong. I was still involved with the gangs, ended up in the principal's office for gang graffiti. The principal told me she would not tolerate it, but instead of kicking me out, she gave me a warning. I was pretty shocked that I didn't get kicked out of high school. School was good for me. I felt safe at school, fell in love with the arts there. My art teacher took us places. At one point, she took us to the youth shelter, clean up the yard, and do some work at the art shelter. A few months passed and I committed a crime, a crime that's so bad at the age of 16 years old, I was sent to Polk County Jail. And yes, I was scared. To my surprise, my parents were able to get me out of jail. And I went back to school, and the first thing my art teacher tells me is that she's shocked to see me back in school. Right then and there, I knew the whole school knew. I wasn't sure if they knew through the newspaper or the news on TV. I felt shame for crimes I committed before, but not as bad as this time. Either way, the teachers never judged me. They simply showed me through school that there's more to life than gangbanging. For example, during summer school, the whole school often took trips. I remember sometimes we'd walk downtown and take notes on the architectural features of the buildings. I started seeing school as an outlet from the gangs because it started keeping me busy and expanding my horizons. I know I was facing years in prison. Prison that scared me was dead. What did was leave my family and school behind. Throughout my Throughout my court days, the teachers and parents stood behind me. They often wrote letters for me on their behalf. And on, one of the day, on the day before one of my court dates, one of the teachers had a jade frog, told me to rub it for good luck. With some good luck and the help from my, county attorney, from my attorney, we eventually struck a deal with the county attorney. I decided that instead of facing prison, instead of prison, I would plead guilty and, att and attend the state training school for six months a juvenile facility for, for those who have committed felonies in the state of Iowa. I was extremely happy because I was getting, given the opportunity to return to my high school and graduate. I had no time for goodbyes. I was handcuffed and sent to the juvenile detention center where I waited to be transferred to the state training school. During my stay in the state training school, I knew what I had to do to stay out of trouble. But it was hard at first because I was feeling homesick and there were constantly people starting trouble. At one point, one of the staff caught one of my accomplices with a spoon in his room, sharpened into a knife. I guess he wanted to stab me because he knew I was done with the gangs. Throughout my stay, the only things I looked forward to besides getting out was my parents coming and visiting me and bringing me food and getting letters from my high school teacher. Special, especially my art teacher from my alternative school. Her letters were mostly postcards and she would write about the things the school were doing and how could they can't wait for me to return back to school. It made me feel good that people cared about me. When I left the state training school, I had a month left to school before the summer began. I knew I was behind in school, and they pushed me towards attend summer school. I did and managed to get, enough, get some credits, but it wasn't enough for me to graduate. Throughout my stay in school, I really became close to Mark teacher, whom to this day I still talk, I still talk to. She taught me a lot about life. She taught me not to give up. She showed me that hard work pays off, but she also taught me art. She, along with the teacher, stood with me till I was able to accumulate enough credits and graduate. With my diploma in my hand, I was able to prove that those doubted me and those who stood by me. The following year, I enrolled at a community college as a part-time student. That year was really hard because I was one class away from being a full-time student and working 40 plus hours a week. I had no time for a personal life. After that semester was over, I decided to take a break from school and focus on working. Well, one thing I learned is to work hard with what you do. One thing, but after three years of working a job that I wasn't happy with, it was time for me to move on by leaving the job. 
It is one that I don't regret, but it was those three years I met. Those three years I learned a lot. I met a girl who ultimately changed the course I was headed. When I first met her mom and dad, I was straight up forward with them about my past. They never once judged me. Even though things didn't work out, I stayed in touch with her family, especially her mom. Her mom pushed me towards going back to school and helping out others. She always looked for ways for, you, for me to use my story of being a gang member to help out others who are in a gang or think about joining a gang. Throughout those three years, she was there for me whenever I needed something. After a good three year break from school in August 2011, I began my first day of the college of the fall semester. That semester I realized that college is fun and hard. That semester I managed to do very well in school. With only a month left before the, summer, the semester ended, I signed up for the spring semester. The following semester began on January 2012. I felt even more comfortable with school, made new friends. In March 2012, with the help from my former probation officer, I met with the juvenile court judge and the county attorney. I wanted to thank them for giving me a second chance of life and to get my juvenile record sealed. I strongly believe that people who face a tough life are no different than people who had a normal life. They want the same thing as you do. They just didn't have the same opportunity to get them, but have different ways of getting there. Everyone thinks a mother is the person who gives you birth or the one that raises you. But that's not all a mother is. It is the person who helps you trans transition in life. Therefore, I have three mothers. But mother's not just a noun, it's also a verb. The definition of a mother as a verb is to watch over, nourish, protect, and care for. Therefore, anyone can be mother and be mothered. The same goes for guys. They can be fathers. It's about caring and giving it to others. My message worth spreading is this. No one's held to a destiny. There are people around you who can birth you to new places, and there are people you can birth into new places. With their belief in you, and there are people you can birth into new places with you believe in them. Look for them, and later on in life become one of them. I want to thank these people. My mother, Ellen, Lisa, Claudia, Judge Cohen, Carl, Gary, and Eric. Thank you.